a patient was referred with clinical and biochemical evidence of intermittent cholangitis. He had previous Roux-en-Y surgery. Imaging demonstrated a solitary stone in the distal bile duct, and ERCP was unsuccessful. He was transferred for definitive care. The T2 images demonstrate a small stone in the distal common bile duct. This is better demonstrated on this image. He was consented for a laparoscopic common bile duct exploration and cholecystectomy. At the time of surgery, there were fairly substantial adhesions of omentum and the colon to the right upper quadrant and specifically to the liver. These were carefully taken down. Care was taken to protect the duodenum and the colon. Likewise, the hilar plate was carefully identified so as not to damage or injure the bile duct itself. Here, the cystic duct lymph node is identified and the structures in closed triangle are identified and the critical view is obtained before dividing the cystic artery. The cystic duct has been identified at its insertion into the bile duct and it will be clipped in preparation for a cholangiogram. A cholangiogram catheter is introduced into the patient and inserted through a small ductotomy and clipped in place. Under fluoroscopy, a cholangiogram will be done. This demonstrates a filling defect in the distal bile duct that is non-mobile and that was consistent with the MRI images. I proceeded to clean off the anterior surface of the junction of the common hepatic duct and the common bile duct, and then using the cautery on cut, a small ductotomy is made. This is extended longitudinally using Metzenbaum scissors. A limited cholidocotomy is performed. The duct is flushed copiously to see if the stone can be dislodged using this simple method, but this was unsuccessful. Therefore, a biliary Fogarty catheter was introduced into the distal bile duct. It is inflated and pulled back, and the stone emerges with the balloon will simply be removed using a grasper. After flushing out the duct several more times, a T-tube is introduced. It is cut and prepared for insertion, and then it is sutured in place using 5-0 braided absorbable sutures. These are done in an interrupted fashion. and. I'm trying to achieve a tight closure on the bile duct. A total of three sutures were required to close the cholidocotomy and secure the T-tube in place. The repair appears sound. There is no obvious leakage around the T-tube insertion. The cystic duct is appropriately clipped and then the cholecystectomy is completed. In number 19, Blake drain is left in the right upper quadrant and the specimen is removed in a bag. Postoperatively, a cholangiogram was done through the T-tube showing filling of the intrahepatic ducts, no filling defects, and filling of the duodenum. The T-tube was clamped on the same day and the drain was removed. The patient's T-tube has been removed in the clinic uneventfully.